Hello, Tango friends. Wherever you are in the world, welcome to Patricio and Eva Tango class. Today we are going to explore the calesita. Calesita uh, is a very versatile step. Uh, you can do it with either leg, different positions, and they are very playful. And, and they can be very useful, especially if you want to dance or if you are dancing music that the, that the uh, how do you say, when the music is... Undulation? Yes. <laughs> <Like this. laughs> so no sharp music, you know, calesitas are very nice when you have to extend with the melody. That's the word, melody. When the music is melodic, calesitas are very useful in those kind of music. So. We're going to explore uh, open possibilities, possibilities for a lot of playfulness. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, do you know? Uh, can you tell the people what calesita means in English? Carousel. That's what it means. Carousel. Yes. Or merry-go-round. Merry-go-round. The merry-go-round yes. is a common name for the for the corner um, furniture that you turn your groceries uh, in your kitchen. Exactly. Or the one that we have in Seattle with the horses and lights. Mm-hmm. It's something For that it has an axis and everything else turns around. Basically. Like a revolving door. Yes, like that. So we're going to resemble that mechanic, the mechanics mm -hmm. of a revolving door. Something that has a fixed axis in the center and an energy of circulation. Yes. And before we go to that, I wanted to say thank you to my beautiful friend, Selina Rotundo, for this clothing that I'm wearing today. She's amazing doing clothing, so thank you so much. And thank you also to Cristina Delon for the beautiful uh, jewelry that she always provides me with. Okay, I love wearing these uh, wonderful artists and creators uh, clothes and jewelry. Thank you so much. You look beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> You're sharp today. Yes, today yeah. we had a showcase with mm -hmm. our students. It was the first time we do this. Uh, no, first time, second time actually, uh, or third time actually. Uh, we're veterans of this. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, third time. <laughs> uh, but the first time that we do it at the LBD Dance Studio, mm -hmm. and it was a great success. Lots of smiles, lots of great times, uh, supportive um, community of dancers and students and instructors. So it was a beautiful experience today. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we were wearing our finer clothes, exactly. we decided just to stay on. And, okay, uh, let's go like this. <laughs> yes, bring a little bit of that style to our, um, to our online class as well with my bow tie. I love it. <laughs> and my cufflinks. You look sharp. Thank you. Um, so how about we begin with a nice dance? Yes, let's dance a little bit. So Great. we warm up. Yes. Today we're dancing to the Sexteto Milonguero, our friends um, in Argentina.
tu adiós me repetía desde el muelle de las sombras Tibio, como en la tarde por el sol, mi sol de nieve Sin esperanza y sin alondras, tibio guardo el beso que dejaste en mis labios al marcharte Porque aún no te olvidé Yo sé que el cielo, el cielo y tú vendrán a mí para salvar mis manos presas esta cruz. Si esta mentira audaz busca mi pena, no la descubras tú. Desengañar así será más cruel. No, no me repitas ese adiós, que esto no se pasó de Dios. El cielo. High up there. Yes, where we come from performing, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, it's like the energy is up. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Calesita. Mm -hmm. Calesita. La calesita. Merry go round. El carrusel. Simply finding the axis of your partner and turning around. What do you need? A good frame. Okay, this is physics 101. We all learned this in school. Mm -hmm. Examples of different leverage. Here my partner will be vertically standing in her axis. I find my partner as we transfer weight. Always in the tango between steps you're gonna do a 100% weight transfer. That means you're not gonna lift up a foot of the ground until you don't have the weight out of it. So when you have the weight completely in one leg, you, that means you have it off of that other leg. In this position here, the lead can begin walking around the follow and carry the frame. You see here there is a lot of fixed points and there is a lot of variable points. And we have to be in control of them. Mm -hmm. So, the distance between the follow and the lead has to be pretty much constant. Because here, we are having a center dancer here, somebody that stands in the center, in this case, the follow, as if she was the sun. She is standing in the center of the solar system. And I will be acting as a planet, revolving around the sun, having an orbit, right? But if that orbit takes me too far away during winter, and it takes me too far away from the sun, and I don't have that flexibility to adjust my frame as the distance increase, then I will make my partner fall. So then, the, the, the distance has to be fixed for a certain amount, because at some point it needs to become adjustable. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, you need to use your own criteria. Here, there is firmness in this frame, and I carry my partner with me, you see, as I walk. One of the things that I do to maintain the distance from my partner is I angle, I, I angle my posture a little bit I, and I send my back right leg, my right leg goes back and right. I don't just walk straight back because that will make me go away from the sun. So I need to slide a little bit sideways, pivot and then cross, behind. cross that one cross behind. So this one feels more diagonally side, pivot, cross behind. Diagonally side, pivot, cross behind. If you open a little bit more, you will actually embrace the follow all the way around like this. So you can put yourself more perpendicular to her. And in this way, your feet are out of the way. See, right here we establish that axis. 
And when the follow finds herself being placed in one leg and then there's no indication of any other step that you need to take, then obviously all you need to do is stay where you are. And, it, and at this point your partner is going to make you spin. Mm -hmm. You have to kick in, into embellishment mode, styling mode, because while you're not walking, you have one leg available to you to use, to move. And we call that the free leg. Free because it's free of weight. That's all. And then that is the leg that is going to add styling. As I keep on moving side and cross back, side and cross back, until I like to finish on a side step. That way I can be in front of my partner, as you can see here. From here we can walk on back ochos. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. So, so what I would say to the follows is, as Patricia says, that frame is very important and the way the lead walks around is extremely important because if not we are, we are going to feel that they are pulling us, pulling us off our center and we are just pinning one foot and we cannot do anything if we feel like we are falling. But if, what is very important is our frame, our own frame and our own connection with our body. So if I'm standing, in this case we are doing, we are going to do many different ones because calesita can be done, as I said at the beginning, in either leg, in many different positions, okay? But to start, you know, if you put your weight in one of the legs and you feel this is a calesita, your frame needs to be firm. Because as soon as you start, if you, if you are too loose in your frame, for sure you will uh, lose your axis and your partner can do a certain amount of effort to keep you in your axis, okay? So you are responsible of your own axis. At least they put you off. You should be able to keep your frame, pin, whatever you turn, like pin to that leg, right? So then with the help of them, you are, have a strong core, you keep yourself in one position, and if you start embellishment, doing things with the leg or anything, be sure that the standing leg is really um, supporting your weight straight, okay? Yeah. La calecita is a thing in itself, really, because it does not need anything else before or after, but yeah. it's really a getaway to volcadas, mm -hmm. a getaway to colgadas, a getaway to planeos as well, yes. okay? Because they're all bent into this uh, circular rotation, yes. okay? A good way to practice this at home, I know Richard from Canada uh, is drinking champagne and practicing at home, oh, so nice. we're going <laughs> to help uh, with a couple of uh, exercises. Yes, right? Uh, he said, bring the champagne, like I'm ready for the champagne now uh, with the bow tie. I'd rather uh, red wine. You prefer red wine, yes. yes. Um, so one exercise is very simple to, to increase your balance here. You simply stand up with your hands in your waist, mm -hmm. like this. You put your hands in your waist or your hip, and then you raise one knee up, making sure that your foot is here at the knee. Okay? And put the bottom foot straight. And just stay there and struggle. Stay for one minute. If you fall off and have to come back, you do it. But as you stay here for a little bit, you will start noticing where the heat builds up. And when there is more temperature, I mean heating, you will notice that that's where the strain is going. Mm -hmm. Just to become aware of that. To hold you in that yes. position. And you will be improving. If this is too easy, you can close your eyes and just hold the position with your eyes closed. Let's do it, okay? Richard, at home, one. Two, three, close your eyes. Oh, la, la, this gets 200% harder, you see? Oh, okay, Just go back up, close your eyes again. Oh, see, even worse. Let's do the other leg. You remind me of, you remind me of this, when we were, we were working at Cirque du Soleil. Yes, this is where we learn about this. <laughs> we were working, we were training at Cirque du Soleil, and they put a half a, what is the dome. name of that? It's Half a dome, a dome, which is something that um, is like wobbly. a dome, like it's wobbly, and they were just doing like different dome. tests, right? So they put you standing with one foot there and just trying to find your axis, and you have a wobbly 
the floor, uh, uh, surface, right, where you are standing, and then they make you on purpose close your eyes to see how long, you know, you can you can hold it without falling. I mean, I, I know. Some people that hold a long time. I know, but very few people. Like most people, just fall right away. Like, <laughs> it's so hard. Let's do the other side. Okay, I will not close my eyes. So. Okay, try to make sure. I, I have heels to make to have some difficulty. <laughs> Yeah, yes, I'll, I'll do it with my eyes closed. So we go up, knee up, and hold up. Make sure your hands are on your waist and that your knee is as high as possible, having your left foot touching your knee. Posture is everything. And you stay there. And you feel the struggle. You feel your ankle fighting for it. See, it's not easy. You have to fight for it. And then when this is just boring or it feels like it's too, much, too, too easy, you close your eyes and keep your attention in your axis. Keep closing your eyes. Oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and like Eva said, the progression is uh, find something unstable and stand on it. You can fold the towel in, in several pla places and then make it that wobbly. But this I, feel, is I feel the, mo the most in my own body, I feel it here in these muscles. Yes. The muscles that are holding my, my um, ankle in yes. place. Yeah. Uh -huh. So one way of exercising this is that. I turn myself a little bit. See, I'm here using my elbow. And here we have to talk about milonguero versus salon. And a lot of people are here in this area of the world. They feel a little bit more purist. They, when they have a certain pride when they say, oh, I'm milonguero. I like to dance milonguero style. As if it really that it resembles purity in the style or authenticity of Argentine tango. It's just a and, style. And it's just one way of doing things. But what I see is that people uh, have conflicts when they talk about milonguero and salon. And they actually want to do all the figures and the beautiful combinations that a salon posture and a salon approach will give you, but you cannot do it with a milonguero uh, embrace. No. And, um, so even whipping milonguero, we need to decide what is good milonguero and not so good milonguero, right? Mm -hmm. Because people, when they talk about milonguero, they think about having an, a type of embrace of a, the double nail song, uh, embracing where you just lock your partner into place and just grab him by the neck. And that not necessarily might bring you to the most stable position, right? Of course. So, number one, no matter how close you're dancing, um, this is as close as you're going to get to your partner. Once your skin is against your skin of your partner and there is a little bit of tension between um, the torsos, you're not going to get any closer. If you go any closer, it will be at the expense of losing your posture bending your neck and, and arching your back like this. Often at the expense of losing connection because people bring their face forward by bringing their chest further away and um, launching the, their back. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are things that are not preferred. They are not preferred whether you're doing, whether you think you're like salon style or milonguero style. Yeah. So I think it's important to See, what, which are the examples of milonguero that we are following and what is that what we consider milonguero? Obviously, I don't care too much about labels or, or what we call things, um, but I do care about the sensations of pleasure that you have into the dance. So this is an invitation to just, just keep your back straight. Why do I say this? Because this will allow your body to roll. If you are locked into this position and you got your ear behind your partner's ear, uh, oh, yeah. like all the way up like that, then most likely you're not going to be very balanced in order to maintain her space and your space. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah, I actually, that's very true. And make an effort to check your posture in your torso because very commonly I see people, not only lead but follows, goes either way, especially follows sometimes I feel like it, they ki kind of hunch they don't open the backs, they kind of offer this area here on the top, maybe because they have an image of what it should look like or something, I don't know exactly why. Or maybe because just the post posture in real life is not as good. So whatever your posture is, when you work, when you are just sitting at home, it's not the same posture usually 
that you will um, apply when you dance. Maybe it is in your case, I don't know. But sometimes I feel myself like more relaxed, you know, in my life and I'm not paying so much attention. I'm not all the time, you know, so straight. I find mode. out. But when I dance... When you dance... You know, I just you, you change, transform. you know. You transform. So, but it, it has to do not only because they look, it's because yes. it's way more functional. The reality is that it's way more, more functional to be connected in, with your sternum and, and to be with the shoulders correctly positioned, not rolled in, because then you are limiting the, re, the motion of, of your um, spine. Okay, so it will limit your dance by doing that. So be sure when you are dancing that you are always in a good position because you will have way more mobility wherever you do awesome. than if you are there. Automatically, the hunching thing, it kind of start pinching your back and you lose mobility. You, you, not you, only you don't look as good, but you know, it's not functional for your, the dance itself. Yeah? Yeah, that's a perfect reminder. Um, you are a good example of, uh, of posture because uh, you, you, you're very good. Uh, the point is this, look at this beautiful uh, design here featuring Eva's back. You're going to be dancing backwards most of the time, 90% of the time. You're going to be moving backwards. So you have to make sure that your back is presented correctly mm -hmm. because that will be the first, the first impression. So holding the shoulder blades in place, yes, and down and close to the skin so your chest opens. The, the front compensates with the back. So what you push in from the back comes out to the front. And if you want to get the support from your partner, you have to bring your front forward. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, because that way you allow your shoulders to roll back and your neck to be straight. If then there is a moment for contact of the cheeks of the face, or maybe my chin into her cheekbone, maybe that's it. And if you want to cuddle a little more and hug a little more, like a bear hug a little more, know that you can do that whenever the inspiration requires that. But it's important to understand, okay, I'm gonna do this bigger, I need to have this kind of posture so I can hold this. This calesita, Pivot. See, I'm pivoting my right foot, and then I begin here. In this case, my partner is back. And we walk away. Yeah, in that case, when he's back, we don't even need to, to change much the position, right? In the other one, you change way more. No, so you exactly. Adjust, you adjust. If, the calicita, if the calicita begins here, we already have the right side of my chest in the center of my partner's uh, chest. From here, I bring the frame. My hand in the back is rigid, and I turn her with me. You see, I go right, and I cross right. I go right, and I step back. Cross right, step back. Finish on a side step, and you will end up in front of your partner. Kind of like That's you important. slip your foot underneath your elbow. I want to show an a, a way to practice this for the leads. Mm -hmm. I'm bringing here my fragile, my fragile post, okay? This reminds me of the movie, A Christmas Story. The one with the lamp. I the, the, see. the scene with the lamp. Ah, yeah. That's yes, it. this yeah. leg, some of you know this. <laughs> you know this lamp, have you seen this? This movie, A Christmas Story. Fragile. I saw that, yes. that scene. It comes yeah. with a sign that says fragile. And that's the axis of your partner. <laughs> I just want to practice my molinete. Yes. See, that's exactly what leads and follows can do. Yeah, perfect. You see, Eva is shaping a square around this axis. So every corner is equal distance from the center. You do it so well. Look at that. I like this thing. Good. Oh, I like it too. <laughs> okay. Yes. What do you want to I'm show? using it in my online private lessons. We'll put it here. Fragile. There you go. And we're going to do that with this top view camera. 
There you go. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. See, this is something that you have to do. You see what your partner is, and you offer your sternum into your partner. Don't be shy. If you sit back onto your hip, into your heels, and you shrink your chest inwards, that will never come into contact. And then if your shoulders are full, you see this, there's no contact here. If you are shy about it, if you are uncertain of whether you, you, it, it is appropriate to touch your partner with your uh, sternum and your ribs, uh, maybe this is something that we all have to overcome at some point and get comfortable with this. With uh, some people you might feel more comfortable, okay, no problem. This is a nice posture, right there. If you feel like this is not something that you want to do, don't do it. You don't have to do it. You can be separated from your partner, but you can still have this attitude towards the front. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. That will bring you in a, in a stand-up, straight position. Now, from here, you see, I'm turning around my partner. And I'm maintaining my distance around my partner here. And if there is a little bit of fluctuation, I don't go like this, because that will make tip, you see? If I grab my partner and bring him with me, this cannot happen, because my partner loses this vertical axis, and she will be tipped. Okay, so you need to try to, to avoid that, trying to make sense of the radius. Mm -hmm. The radius is the distance onto the pie from the center of that pivot. This is all there is. In that, the follow will feel like she's perfectly held with the head on top of that one foot and they will enjoy your awareness. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we go a check step onto a side step. Now this is a known location. I know where that axis is and I know that weight is up on top of that. Maintain that and that and that and that and that. The last one I can walk away. Volcada. Look how beautiful that is. And then push through and dance away. Mm -hmm. You see, that's why I said that the calesita is a getaway to the volcada. And what does it do? It dresses it up. It dresses it up and then it looks more, less premeditated. Because when the improvisation is obvious and you're relying on a big combination to get to somewhere, then uh, it's not so spontaneous. So what we want to do is just to find places where we can connect a certain movement that is just floating in our mind, wanting to get our attention, and the movement that we're doing. I would like to do the other one. Which one is the other one? The one that um, I go calesita like this. Oh, because I Because I would like to do the second one. Okay, then again. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's give an opportunity then to follow, to practice mm -hmm. uh, the walking forward, pushing the foot. I'm going to bring the piece of paper. Okay, yeah. Okay, everybody at home, I want you to grab a piece of paper, please. Grab a piece of paper, a napkin, and you're gonna bring it onto the little dance floor. I hope you made some space. Eva, I wanna say hello. We have so many friends watching today from all over the world. Hello, friends all over the world. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, <laughs> several continents. Hold yes. this paper for you and hold this paper for me, please. There you go. I'm gonna tell you who's watching and what they're saying. Okay, okay? and I will hold this paper. Well, no, you can relax about it. I can do it. <laughs> yes, okay. So, look, nos estamos olvidando de hablar en español. Tenemos nuestros amigos de Argentina que nos están mirando. Richard Sinhum dice, hola Patricio and Eva. Hola Richard, welcome again. Uh, Cristina dice, what a beauty. Dice, Eva, what a beauty, qué belleza. Gracias, Chris. Yes. Uh, Juan Martín dice, hola. Hola, Juan, Chi. Uh, Cristina de Long está en Palm Desert y ya hace 93 grados. Uh, oh, uh, yes, Richard says, uh, bring on the champagne. We're ready to celebrate. We actually celebrated last night and we continue to celebrate. Uh, Karina, Karina Casco de Canadá también. Cari. Qué guapos, están hermosos, dice. Gracias, Cari. <laughs> Daría Consiglieri dice, hola Patricio y Eva, saludos desde Bathel. Our um, previous neighborhood. Our previous neighbor, that's a yes. neighborhood of artists. We know Mario Consiglieri, who lives in Basel. We know Kurt Cobain, that was, used to live in Basel, Nirvana singer. And I know someone, Eva Lucero, another artist, amazing artist from uh, 
from Bato. You see, this is a place where the artists come out. Coco uh, Bain used to live in Madison Park. No, no? Coco Bain was from Bato. Okay, I remember the joke, watching... The joke is that's why he killed himself. I mean, uh, what a bad joke. But in... Oh, really? He, yes. Oh, I see. Okay, okay, well. Uh, and then maybe he bought a house in Madison Park when he became rich. I think I saw a house there um, and I think it was yeah. the one that, yeah. Muy elegantes los dos, bella pareja, dice Celeste, uh, Celeste Ávila de Argentina. Happy Mother's Day to everyone, dice Cristina Delon. Ah, yeah, y it's, happy, it's Mother's Day today, that's right. Today or tomorrow? Or to, I'm not tomorrow. sure, it's well, Mother's maybe Day tomorrow, is a, I don't know. Mother's Day is on Sunday. In, in, yeah, in the United States. It's, in Argentina it's not. Mother's Day, but here it is, yeah. Ok, Aida, ¿no? Aida Giliberti nos deja sus saludos, aunque no entiende lo que decimos. Muchas gracias, Aida, por tus saludos. Un beso. Y Jasmine, Jasmine Williams from Dallas. Dallas. Uh, she says hello and leaves us two big hearts. Thank you, everybody, for your messages. Please share our classes with your friends and share it in your Facebook or leave some interactions because it's very important for us to find a way to reach out to new people. Mm -hmm. It's very important that people can see that we are here. So thank you for that. So we go back to the pushing of the paper. So what is that I want to do? I want you to grab the piece of paper, okay? And facing the screen, we are going to bend our knees slightly and we're going to bring it forward and side. Forward and side. Forward and side. Let's transfer weight. And last step on the paper with the other foot and do the same. Forward, push the paper, push it side. This is the action of projecting. Projecting, the word says it. When you project something, you are beaming that ahead of you. In this case, the foot. Normally we do it with light. You turn on a flashlight, you're projecting the light ahead of you. And what does it do? It just goes ahead. So when you begin your movement, you got to begin with projecting of your foot. And when you go to the side as well, and when you go to the back. At what speed? Faster than gravity. I don't care what speed, but faster than your actually weight loss. Uh, no, weight loss. Um, <laughs> faster than your weight loss, fa uh, fa than your weight transfer, because you're actually going to step out of this foot, but you got to put your foot forward and often push it beyond that. And when you go back, bring it in and then push it back. This paper method helps, yes, it helps with cleaning the floor. Exactly. Right? I remember when we were kids, our mothers will uh, wax the floor and then we'll put wool pads on the entrance to the dining room or the bedroom, whatever where had fresh wax. I remember my aunt I loved, screaming. I, I used to love doing that, actually. Oh, yes. It was the best part of the, um, the house, to go yes. put them on and just slide yes. into it. Yes. And they were done by hand normally because they didn't have the machine to polish them. Mm -hmm. So once it was polished, you got to take care of it. So yeah, we run with that. I would run like this on the floor, all the house. I love when it. you practice, when you practice your tango, you got to feel that you're projecting your leg. In the exercise that Eva is offering in the Tuesday class, because Eva is leading a technique class on Tuesdays, we do a lot of ballet bar exercises, and they have similar technique, and they're very useful for this, because as you do a tendu, you are exercising this extension, mm -hmm. right? Now, why do I insist with this? Because if the follow is going to enter into a forward, if the follow is going to enter into a forward, calecita, possibly with a planeo, we need to project. You have yeah. to project your foot. And then I bring you back to Milonguero and Salon. Milonguero has the characteristic of being on a split weight in the middle of the step. And we so often step on both ways. We open our leg and arrive to this place. And then close and stand. Close and stand. But there is no so, such a clear way of defining the projection 
the weight transfer and then the collection. It's mostly chassaying. Chassaying means you are transferring your weight as you slide your foot. It's very common in Milonguero to see this kind of attitude. See, I'm stepping with the leg straight and weight on it. So in this case, we're going to be always on the split weight on the beat. Mm -hmm. Here, here, here. And that is the main difference to me between a milonguero style and salon style. Now, if your partner steps on top of the foot like that, and then she is transferring her weight as she goes, she might not have that opportunity to foresee this arrival to this axis here. And you might not be able to initiate this circulation. So very important to me that you don't do this. I'm going to do it in the wrong way. See, she steps out. She steps out because I'm bringing her way past, I'm bringing her way past the hip. Mm -hmm. Now, when we can distinguish this, mm -hmm. you see how I brought her down? See, right here. And if the follow is holding this foot, right foot back down onto the floor until the very end of the push, because she brings herself forward, then I can signal this calecita. That in itself is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this is a calecita with a planeo. We visited planeo a month or so ago. Yeah. So this will be maybe a coming back and... Well, it's in addition, because you can make the calecita last a long time, right? This is a nice sequence, for example. I bring you low, you do a boleo. I bring you forward. And then when she arrives there, I begin turning. I get a little pulling in this left arm. My hand is pulling back, back. My left hand pulls back. Mm -hmm. This early from the 60s was passionate about violins and this is a beautiful yes. kind of movement to do when the violin solos kicks in because the violins are smooth instruments they are not so much i mean they can be everything because they're leading voice uh, but they have the particularity no. of making long no. long sounds like the piano doesn't do like anything that is mm -hmm. percussion doesn't do mm -hmm. um, so because of the um, because of the arc uh, so Keep that in mind. One, two, three. See, little calicita. Slow that right here, you see? I've stopped my partner there. I don't bring her past that. Because if I bring her that, that she's coming out of that position and she walks. So we want to, we want to clarify to the follow that she stays. And this is circular. Sometimes the music has some stretches in which we could do turn, 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 turn. Sometimes not so much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this can be used to re rearrange the couple. Sometimes you go to a position in the corner of the dance floor, you make one, two, three steps, and then you aim and you go navigate into a different direction. Mm -hmm. I think it's time to dance, Eva. Yes. Is she here? Wow. Okay, let's dance another song by the Sexteto Milonguero. Okay. And for Javier the, Di For the ladies out there, when you are doing the calecita, when you are projecting the leg, unless you are doing an embellishment that you want that leg, as I did before, like a ruler, for example, or stuff like that, where you bend your knee, if you are projecting the leg, uh, try to really check that your knee is completely extended in this position, or if you're doing calecita on that position out there, this popping up of the... You see, many times I see follows that they think the leg straight, but it's kind of not to the maximum, okay? You need to engage that muscle there to fully extend the leg. So you will have a, a nicer line when you turn. Yeah.
ansia de vivir, sueño realidad. Algo quiere ser un amanecer en mi soledad. Tanto que olvidé sitios que dejé, dichas que perdí. Hoy en la emoción de mi corazón todo vuelve a mí. Que mi oído no olvida, meterá tu voz hasta mi pena escondida, la luz y la vida de un rayo de sol. Vuelvo a escuchar el nombre mío en tu acento, sin descifrar si es la palabra que siento. Mentira del viento del hilo no va. cuando lo bailamos en vivo, qué bueno, una energía increíble. Mira. Muy lindo, muy lindo. Eva, no we sé have to bring es. the sign, we have to bring es? the sign. Tenemos 15 oh, minutos. Okay. Tenemos que traer... Ahí está, tenemos el cartel. So, friends, students, um, as you know, We are making these classes available to everybody at no cost and we hope you can make a donation to support our efforts uh, so we can continue sharing our passion with everybody. We love tango. Um, we um, are going through uh, this extended period of um, exodus and um, we uh, appreciate your support if you enjoy our classes and want to help us continue sharing the tango with the world. Uh, it might sound insignificant to you, but any amount help. You can make a donation of $5, $10, $20, $50, $100. Any amount will help towards the uh, cost. Um, we are trying to save money to buy a switcher and that will optimize our timings of changing cameras so if you want to clarify you make a donation for that that will bring us closer to our goal mm -hmm. um, and we're also planning to do some um, other uh, collaborations with artists um, and bring uh, some uh, live performances onto our evenings uh, we had to slow down a little bit because there is so much going on uh, outside the internet Uh, but we're gonna uh, get back to that soon. We know a lot of artists with whom we would like to collaborate and uh, continue sharing what we do with you. Yes. Um, so uh, if you cannot make a donation, there are other ways to uh, help. You can help us reach out more people, share this with people with whom you uh, know they might be interested. Uh, you can tag your friends, you can send our videos to them. Uh, and maybe they can make a donation or maybe they will uh, help us have more viewers and that will be also helpful. Mm -hmm. You can like, follow. You can like, follow, follow. subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> It's the phrase of the, click, of the click, moment. Click. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, on the other side, our studio, our studio is open for private lessons. We are teaching in-person private lessons on a daily basis through the evenings on the weekdays. Uh, we are uh, getting ready to start group classes very soon uh, and we also have Tuesday uh, evening uh, lessons with Eva. She is teaching a conditioning and a technique class for dancers that is fabulous. I told you this last week. I am as flexible as Eva now that I started these classes last month. So <laughs> you see they are really effective. <laughs> I know you laugh at me. 
No, you are doing great. You're actually you're doing very, very good. Very nice. Vamos a mostrar la combinación. Quiero yes, mostrar la combinación antes que termine el tiempo de pasar de una a otra para que vean qué haces vos. Mm. Pasar de una a otra. You mean planeo on to planeo. Planeo. Yes. On to planeo. All right. So we established that the calecita is the action of walking around your partner multiple steps in a circular way. It can be done clockwise or counterclockwise. The follow could be facing this way or could be facing that way. It could be facing forward or backwards. And if you are able to do more than one turn, you could be styling in so many different ways. Now, if the follow, instead of staying up or up or up or up, decides to go down and drop, then she has now entered the realm of the planeos. And there is an infinity of things that you could do there. Now, the reason why I was telling you and making you practice earlier pushing the paper is because you arrived to this axis right here. Do you see this? This is perfect axis here in the front. From here, the follow can begin this planeo here. But now there is another element here. One thing is the circulation that I create because I am fixed to Eva and I am making her turn. I'm pulling around and I make her turn. Now, Eva can also have her own atmosphere and the atmosphere fluctuates. It's not fixed all the way to the core. The atmosphere can vary, okay? For example, a good example is Jupiter. When you look at Jupiter, you, Jupiter has that characteristic because it's a, it's a gas and the inside rotates at a different speed than the outside. In this case, what is happening here? Eva can turn in her orbit. I just want you to turn in your orbit. So okay. this is the rotation independent of Eva, and this is the rotation externally that I'm creating. So I could make Eva turn with me at a fixed amount, or I could begin with Eva facing left and finish with Eva facing right. You see, two things. It's like turning the dial. It's like the fine tuning of the radius of an old, um, of an old tuner. We got the tuning and the fine tuning that moves the dial even less. So in this case, the follow will begin the journey with the leg cross behind and after one, two, three, four, five steps maybe on the side. And this facilitates this transition. Exactly. How about we break it down and we do this with people at home by themselves? Like transitioning here, transferring the way, one planeo from the leg to the side and one way transfer. Would you like to do that in the footwork camera? Yes. Because I think it's worth giving a little bit of attention to it. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Get out of the couch. Come on. Get up. Move the furniture. And come try this because you will like it. All right. Do you want to show it like that first? Once, and then we'll go to the footwork camera. Mm -hmm. So the planeo, of course, can be longer than what I, I'm going to do. I will just show you the mechanics, mechanics be, between the leg behind to the side and change weight. Okay, so because I don't have a partner right now to do it, this is an exercise for yourself. So when you step forward and the planeo starts here, you go with the leg back, side. So from this position, you are going to start the planeo and this leg that is in the back, is going to go side and then you're going to change because from here we are going to do another planeo okay and again i don't have anybody now to to hold to hold me or to actually make me do a planeo so this is the technique for you to understand from this way transfer here this leg goes around and sideways now Lovely. i transfer and from here, he will start the other planeo. So this leg, most likely, I will allow it to kind of turn a little bit before going back. 
But it depend, that does depend how you feel, how you want to embellish it. Okay, so it's not only one way of doing it, but the idea of extending, turning that leg, and be, being ready there to transfer you away from the next planeo is what we are trying to work here, the projection between one planeo to the other planeo. Yes? yes? So maybe we can do it with the footwork, no? This is so rich. Let's do top view, top view. This is something that I love doing on my own. Is can I have a little yes. space? You begin stepping forward, where you transfer your waist, swing your shoulder, mm -hmm. bring yourself to the side step. Here, swing your shoulder again. This is something very common. Follows like to precipitate the picking up of the foot, and then you lose the uh, ability to push to propel yourself. See, if you look at my back foot, it's not lift up. My back foot here is going to stay in the floor until I transfer my weight fully forward. I cannot dress, address this any more strongly. I'm begging you, I'm begging you <laughs> to please keep that foot on the ground until the end of the 100% weight transfer. transfer. In the name of tango, I'm telling you this. <laughs> So forward, because this maximum extension gives you the power to come here. And this one too, and you transfer your weight, look at your left foot. When you look at your left foot, you're lengthening this side, and this will be your impulse onto the next one. This cannot be done slow motion, like Eva well said a moment ago, because there is no external anchoring here. But at a little higher speed, You can do it, mm -hmm. and it's really nice. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's very nice. All right. So you want to do it in front of that camera so they see you with the top view. The top view. Yes. Let's see if I can do this here. There. Yeah. Transfer. There. So gorgeous. There. Very nice. So we, let's go to the footwork camera and let them see a close-up of your... Okay. Yes, the footwork camera will let people see a close-up of the movement. If you want to do it by yourself once, then I hold you and we do it together. Okay. I will do this side. That is the one that we are doing right now. So this moment, right? Torso, leg. Very nice. Let's do it together. Notice how I step behind her here, so I have more rotation. See this moment? I went sideways, I passed him. I mean, he's leading me there, huh? It's not like I just decide to do this by myself. Well, I'm looking at your progression, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling at what moment the follow finishes panning sideways with the leg mm -hmm. and then try to smoothly match that. Sorry, I, I broke through it, you see? <laughs> you can step up through it very easily. Of course. There. Thank you. So what do you do? Now that I'm a tango know. dancer. What? <laughs> I remember that Me English too. 101. What is your occupation? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What do you do? And then you came to America and nobody spoke like that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in your footwork? Well, here I begin moving to connect both of them. around you, pivot, and then I finish on a cross step and bring you outside or inside my foot. And then you transfer your weight. Now she has a different that moment is a different axis. You see, this is like the like the Olympics. You know, the the, the, the logo of the Olympics that you're a, a circle and a circle a little bit uh, yes. to the left. So the first circle, the first circle happens here. Now she steps over to that side, and she has a new axis. Now I'm gonna make her go backwards. And right here, she could finish in a boleo and move from here. 
Okay, so Patricio then is, is going around and he's finishing in one of the crossing steps. And then it's when he makes me pass to the other side. Okay, so that's... Let's show, show them one more time. Yes, we're going to do it with music. Yes, okay. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are getting a, at the end. We have to finish actually. Amazing how time goes. Yeah. You want to finish with a dance and show them the combination? Yes, we can do that. Que tu adiós me repetía desde el muelle de las sombras Tibio como en la tarde por el sol mi sol de nieve Sin esperanza y sin alondras Tibio guardo el beso que dejaste en mis labios al marcharte Porque aún no te olvidé uh, Yo sé que el cielo, el cielo y tú Vendrán a mí para salvar para los presos esta cruz si esta mentira audaz busca mi pena no la descubras tú que me condena guardala en mí que es mi querer Desengañar así será más cruel. No, no me repitas ese adiós, que esto no se pasó de Dios. El cielo. going to say bye to you and we hope to see you next Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for being here in the other side of the screen. Yes? Yeah, gracias mi amor. <laughs> it was a pleasure to see all of you again. Uh, Walter, Walter Plevanik just joined us. He said he misses us. Yeah, we missed you yesterday. Um, come back next week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Friends, thank you very much. We look forward to see you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Patricio. See you. Until the next time. In a time. minute. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.